it started with a game. If everyone would like just bag the noise and pay like we could do this. Sonny, name one thing that's gotten better in the last 10 years. Shall we play a game? Video games. All right, I acknowledge that. Totally awesome video game! <laughs> Welcome uh, to Game Writing 101. Uh, if you haven't taken my course yet, if you're new to writing or if you're, if you're new to game writing, I have sort of a process that I have laid out, structured, kind of feel like it's a college course sort of. And uh, it's one that will help you create even your own interactive uh, narrative and and possibly add it to your portfolio. But it just teaches a very basic hands-on process for narrative design. Very simple, not the only process, not even necessarily the best process, but a simple process for you to cut your teeth on as you, you know, become a narrative designer and grow and learn from all kinds of other smarter people. But now we're, we're just kind of rapping. We're, we're, you're, it's like you're, you're hanging out after class with the cool professor or maybe even you're going to the local campus hangout with, with some other students and having a beer and, and just talking to the, to the cool professor. Boundaries intact, okay, but, but the cool professor. And um, yeah, and, and so I, I decided to make a quick video based on something that I saw on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, uh, at least to me, a very useful thing still. I don't know how every young person feels about it, but it's a great way to keep track of all your work colleagues. And I have found work with people who found me on LinkedIn, just searching, and I didn't know uh, prior to that. And, um, and I've even gotten, you know, jobs from people that I haven't heard from or worked with in a long time. I... Like 2007, 2008, I got a freelance job working on a game based on the movie Cats and Dogs 2. 2. It was really fun, actually. And uh, it was a small studio in a small town in the Netherlands. I actually got to fly there. It might have been my first work trip, but I got to go to another country and work on this game. Um, I can't even pronounce the name of the town be honest. But I went through customs on the way home and they're asking me where I stayed and when I couldn't pronounce anything. Um, it made me look kind of suspicious. <clears throat> um, anyway, I kind of thought I was just going to be a sort of a narrative guy. They really needed also more, some real, you know, vision behind some of the game design and, and, and what the player would experience. Uh, but anyway, I worked on that game. It was fun. It was cool. And I'm not just kidding. I mean, it made me like... 12 years later, somebody who was an assistant producer at the publisher at that time, the publisher who was not even the, the developer, the publisher who was publishing the game, there was an assistant producer who remembered that he liked uh, some of the writing and some of the other stuff from that game that, that I had worked on and found me on LinkedIn and get me and, and I started working for him you know he was like a you know senior person at so th with the same publisher but I got to work on a really cool project for them for for quite a while it was really cool um anyway I think LinkedIn is valuable and I'm on there more and what's been kind of heartbreaking is all the layoffs in the tech sector as and the, and the, and the game industry uh, which hasn't, you know, seen this kind of contraction in quite a while. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a sobering reminder of how volatile it can be at times. And then to see so many people out of work, so many game industry colleagues out of work, even if I don't know them, right? Because, um, you know, my contacts are sharing and, and, and there's a lot of posts. Uh, for, and there's a lot of posts. Uh, from all kinds of game developers, but a lot of posts from narrative designers and game writers with experience who've been laid off. And it's heartbreaking to see their posts. And then, you know, it's been tough. It's been tough to find new jobs. I get the feeling maybe it's turning around a little bit, but um, then you to see these posts where people are like, look, man, you know, like I, I hate to say this uh, in public, but I'm, I really need a job. 
And it's, it's heartbreaking. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> and then I, you know, I saw one sort of common complaint, common frustration in, in some of these types of posts, um, where people were looking at game narrative designer and game writing job posts and seeing that even the, what, what looked to be pretty fairly junior level jobs were asking for like, you know, a year's worth of experience or one ship title or something like that. Frustrating. Or at least, you know, the people who were, who were, who were venting their frustrations on LinkedIn, they were frustrated. And, um, so I wanted to take a moment to talk about that and offer what I hope is some encouragement or at least some insight. Knowledge is power, right? And let me, you know, clarify a couple things. I, I'm not excusing, you know, your, your mileage varies from company to company, right? Some companies are very great when, when smart when, when it comes to recruiting and some uh, a little rough around the edges. I'm not excusing anybody's, you know, individual, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 you know, faults or, or whatever around recruiting. But um, I think I can offer maybe some insight just having worked in the game industry. Um, my experience being part of it, being a full-time employee in a studio was pretty early on in my career. It was like the first five years or so. And I've been a freelance contractor for, for much longer than I was a full-time employee, but I interacted with lots of studios. When I was with that, that first studio in my career, I did help with the recruiting and got some insight there. And um, so I think what it is, is if, you, if, if you're, you know, having the same frustration, you know, first of all, watch my channel, because anytime I see like a game writing internship or junior level where they're very specific that this is junior entry level, uh, I'm I'm posting this on the, on the channel. You can see it. <laughs> Um, the, the, the posting, on the, I, I'll post videos of the jobs on the channel. Uh, hopefully that, pardon me there. Um, my chair fell down, sank down quick time, just crashed on me and the cord fell out of my microphone. All hell broke loose. I don't know what, what happened. Um, where was I? <laughs> I was saying how. Uh, yeah, you know, watch my channel. I, I'm, I'm posting, you know, entry level internship game writing jobs whenever I see them. However, anyway, the frustration that I saw people having on LinkedIn were, you know, um, that even, you know, narrative design jobs, even that kind of looked like the very, very junior, possibly entry level were requiring, you know, experience like, well, you know, the chicken and the egg, how do you get experience if every, what looks to be an entry level job posting wants experience and you don't have any. Um, and I, and I, at least the insight that I can give you is this, right? Studios themselves are almost universally places where everyone is sort of uh, overworked, right? There's been a lot of talk about, you know, crunch time and things like that. But even when things are going pretty good, games are just notoriously hard to plan and schedule. Um game designers and creative directors and programmers, everybody on the team is ambitious. Everybody wants to, you know, put, do great work. And uh, we have lofty ambitions for, for the game. As one programmer put it, um, you, this, is a little, this was kind of crude, but, but the way he, we were talking about, you know, the technical specifications once of the PS2, this was a while ago, and he was saying, yeah, yeah, you know, but it's great, it's much better than the PS, but we're always trying to put 10 pounds of shit in a five pound box, right? No matter how advanced, what he was saying is no matter how advanced, you know, the new system is, we're always trying to do more than maybe we should. So, <clears throat> at a game studio, it, it, it your normal sort of state is everyone's very busy and everyone's being counted on to do their job and, or, and, or, and maybe wear multiple hats and get a lot done. And so the prospect of training a new employee is daunting. And 
it's daunting for the pe person running the studio who knows that, yeah, at my lead artist, I really, I still need them to crank out animations or, or, or you know, and, but if I hire, you know, we need another animator, but if I hire an, a junior an animator who's really green, I'm going to lose pre productivity until they get ramped up. But when we're on a tight schedule, maybe I, I, I just can't, they just can't, like, they, it's just daunting. Like, they feel like they can't, right? Um, and so, and, and so, you know, yeah, everyone's kind of busy, sort of overworked and the prospect of, yeah, even, even a, you know, what looks to be like a qualified, talented candidate with like a cool portfolio, but the, the prospect of really just kind of getting them up and running and, you know, and trained and, and going is, 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 uh, is scary for the studio. And... So, so that's kind of what you're up against, right? The other part of that is, you know, when uh, it's, I mean, this is just kind of the reality, when it is a buyer's market in terms of um, employees, you know, when the, when the studios uh, look around and they see that there's a lot of candidates out there, They'll be they can they they can even uh, they'll be even more inclined to have uh, that disclaimer the job description that says you know please have worked on one AAA title or please have at least one ship title under your belt of some kind so uh, because they know that there there are more candidates out there and 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 their chances of getting somebody with the experience that can just hit the ground running. With a minimum of, you know, it just could be the difference between getting a, you know, a week or two and they're acclimated and they're contributing heavily versus, who knows, you know, a, a month or two, you know. Um, I just pulled that out of my head, a month or two, I don't know, you know, for narrative designers, it, it, it might actually, you know, it's different for the different present professions, you know, but, but, but even with narrative designers, we have pipelines, we have ways of doing things. We get to get you in line with the vision and, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, from the employee, again, I've never run a studio or anything, but, but from their perspective, it's a risk to hire somebody. And I've heard, I've heard plenty uh, from people who, who do run studios and have run studios. It's, it's not easy. Um, so they are really, you know, to hire someone who needs training is almost like, I think there's a mindset that says that's a luxury that they have to be really careful about. This is a sports analogy, forgive me, but, you know, I was watching football one time and um, in the NFL, a football team will play 16 or 17 games in an entire season, not a lot of games. And uh, I, one coach had a saying, he's like, for every rookie you start on your squad as starter, be prepared to lose at least one game. Yeah, I don't know if that's fair, but, but it was interesting. So what, so, what do you, so what does that mean for you? If you're trying to break in, it just, you know, it means use that knowledge. It means the more you can position yourself as somebody who's like, yep, I haven't had much experience professionally but i can hit that ground running because I, I i i you know know a process i've learned a process i created this interactive portfolio using twine and maybe you know if, if you get some kind of insight like this studio that you want a job at i don't know uses unity well maybe go and look at, at, at the tools that unity has on their store for um, writing the actual interactive narrative and, and importing it into into their game. I mean, maybe maybe play around with Unity a little bit insofar as creating, like, I don't know, a text adventure or something, you know. Um, so companies like BioWare and Blizzard will have their own internal tools, but often there'll be versions of those tools that ship with their games. So, you know, if you're, if you're you know, loving um, the latest uh, Diablo game that just came out, uh, I don't know if it, the PC version or the Mac version ships with tools that that you can use to create your own, you know, stuff. But but being able to say, look, I I I I want to, I really want to work at Bioware, and I've used your tool, you know, to create all kinds of cool stuff. And and so 
I'm somebody that when you hire me, yeah, I need a little training, but I will hit the ground running much faster than you think I will. I, 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 yes, of course, there's going to be some investment. There's going to be, of course, be some learning curve. But that learning curve is going to be much shorter. Uh, shorter, lower, higher. I, I, I'm not good at geometry, but uh, you get you get my point. Um, that's the mindset. And I, and I, I take I, I say that just to, I, not to make excuses for for this that or the other, but knowledge is power. You know, um, see it from their kind of perspective. They're they're daunted at the prospect of hiring brand new people when they can barely keep up with their own schedule. And uh, and if, if if they think like, hey, this is a time where there's a lot of exp- more experienced candidates out there on the market than usual, then let's get one of those people and, uh, and you know, if they're fit, then, then we save, we save ourselves some, some time, which is so precious. That's it. I hope that that's encouraging because it's maybe really not, you know, again, not you. I mean, who knows? Maybe they looked at your stuff and they're like, wow, this person's really good. I wish we had more time to train. I gotta keep track of them. You know, I gotta send them the, the I gotta send them the new the normal formal rejection. But I don't, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe I'll, I'll connect with them on LinkedIn and kind of keep tabs on each other over time. You know, you know. Um, I hope. You know, it's, it's still frustrating. It, 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 like I said, you know, it's port- positioning, portfolio, persistence. I should probably put portfolio first. Portfolio, uh, positioning, persistence. But a persistence part that could be hard. You get a lot of rejections, but if 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 you if you've got a strong portfolio that you're always working on, if you've positioned yourself well, and you can see my videos on the on both on all three of these, and then persistence, you'll get in somewhere. I I, I believe that. So um, that's it. That's all I got. I gotta go. Um, I'm gonna go play some Zelda. Uh, hope you're doing well. I I can see. That, you know, when I look at the views for all my videos, at least at least all of my videos that comprise my actual Game Writing 101 course have been viewed at this point. So it stands to reason that at least a couple people have done the entire class the way that I hoped they would. So, you know, don't, don't be afraid to reach out. I've got uh, graduation certificates I can email you. Um, so congratulations to those people. Anyway. Take good care, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be back with another video whenever I have time, and I feel like it. See ya.